Water is the most critical thing in relation to a steam locomotive. Too little of it, and the locomotive can explode. Too much of it, and the locomotive can rapidly disassemble itself. But how much does a locomotive actually use? And does the size of the locomotive change that? What's up guys, this is Heiss, and today we have another look at Railroad 101. This time we're going to be taking a look at 491 and 20, pulling the same five car train for Polar Express and seeing how their water consumption differs. Rio Grande Southern number 20 is a 460 10-wheeler built by the Schenectady Locomotive Works in 1899. She's rather small, weighing approximately 135,000 pounds, engine and tender. That's just over 65 tons for those playing at home. 20's tender holds approximately 3,000 gallons worth of water, though we don't actually know precisely how much it holds, and uh, more on that later. And the boiler holds something like 1,000 to 1,500 gallons. Unfortunately, they didn't always write these numbers down back in the day. Alrighty folks, here we are on top of the tender tank of Rio Grande Southern number 20 in a very brisk evening of Polar Express. I don't know if the, uh, the snow is coming up easily in the background for you. I'm being lit by our tower light and not much else, but we've just topped off the tender tank with water before we get set for the day. So it's about as full as it reasonably can be. And we've got a measuring stick and we're gonna see just how much of the tender tank we actually use while we run tonight. We're gonna to be running three trips of Polar, three miles a piece, so about nine miles total, five cars, which is almost a tonnage train for 20. So, a lot of train behind. You could probably barely see those marker lights back there. <laughs> it should be a fun one. As we can see down in the hatch, water's just barely below the bottom of the manhole, which is gonna be as full as we can get it. And with the way that the tender is actually built, that's actually pretty full because the water legs with the coal pockets actually a little bit lower down than what I'm standing on right here. So either way, we don't have an exact volume for the tender. It's approximately 3,000 gallons. So it'll be close enough to draw a broad conclusion between 20 and 491. So uh, we got a train to run, so we're gonna go do that, but we'll see what the water usage is like when we get all the data from both engines. <laughs> Okay, we have finished things up, engines put away for the day, so it's time to see just how much water it used. And if you wanna see how you put the engine away for the day, uh, I filmed that on this day too. I have no idea how far apart these videos are gonna come out, so uh, it was some time ago. There's a link up in the place for it. Let's take a look-see here. <clears throat> okay, it's looking like it's down at least half a tank. Let's uh, be... Dangerous with the GoPro here. It's very zen inside the tender. But yeah, that looks vaguely less than half, perhaps a third. So we've brought implements of measuring here, a very, very precise one known as a stick. All right, so that right here where I'm grabbing is the top of the tender tank. So we can see just how much water it actually used. So I'm gonna stick that somewhere where I won't lose my grab, right at the edge of the valve. Let's see how much that was. How many inches out of inches for three runs total? All right, there is about 23 and a quarter, maybe 23 inches water left in the tank. And the whole tank is about 53 inches tall. So that means we used about 30 inches worth of water to go to the North Pole and back three times, which I mean, this is the most efficient steam locomotive ever made by that metric. So just saying. We'll do some math. And uh, future me that's editing this and stuff, we'll do some math and put up a table or something. But that's how much water we used. And next we'll see how much water the big one uses. Now the big choo-choo is Denver and Rio Grande Western number 491, a 282 Mikado type built by the Burnham Shops here in Denver, Colorado in 1928. 491's boiler was recycled from an older standard gauge locomotive, and she's technically considered a rebuild by the railroad. 
491 is Big Choo Choo, the biggest of the Denver and Rear Grand Western narrow gauge, weighing 307,250 pounds, engine and tender all put together ready to rock and roll. 491's tender holds 6,000 gallons of water, so a considerable amount more than our GS20. But 491 is also a lot bigger and weighs a lot more, so how's its consumption going to differ? Time to flush the toilet. Is that not what it sounds like? Am I wrong? <laughs> Well, I'm here, Polar Express 491 tonight. I'm filling up the water here, and uh, we're gonna see how much it uses. Hi, Teddy! All right, I'm here featuring monster movie lighting in the extension of the roundhouse that allows 491 to actually fit in the shop. She's a couple feet too long to actually fit all the way in. So we had to add this extension on. And I'm on top of the tender tank and we're about to see how much water we used through this night of polar. Now, we'll talk about a little bit more in the studio when I'm not being monster movie lit. Hey, there we go. Uh, <laughs> some of the challenges that went on and why this may have some confounding variables, but uh, that's the name of the game with science. But let's see just how much water we use, shall we? You know, that's surprisingly not as much as I was expecting. It looks like it's down to the first piece of angle iron. So it's maybe a third of the tank got used? One third, yeah. Okay, so my... I thought my stick would be tall enough because it was tall enough in the right spot, but I'm going to have to add a little bit of an offset here. Let's see. About two fingers extra. That was the bottom of the tank over there. Right there. That's how far it was, and the stick is about an inch shorter than, than the top of the tank. So we'll measure that real quick. So there's 43 and a quarter inches left of water in the tank. 43 and a quarter, and it's a 68 inch of tall tank. So 43 and a quarter on 68. Let's do some quick back of the napkin while we're here, shall we? Because I'm curious right now. 43 and a quarter divided by 68. It's about five eighths of a tank left, which means that we used just shy of 2,200 gallons. Hey. Okay, so I know we just did some back of the napkin math, but what were the actual results? Which engine used more water? Well, we saw 21st, an RGS 20, ended up using about 1,700 gallons, just shy of that, assuming that her tender tank is 3,000 gallons. We'll get into that in a second. And then 491 used 2,200 gallons, or just shy of 2,200. 2,183 if you want to be specific. And we do know that 491's tank is plus or minus very close to 6,000 gallons. So unsurprisingly, the big engine used more water than the little engine did. But the surprising thing is that it's very close. Recall from the video that we did comparing them and how they burn coal, that 491 used over twice as much coal as 20 did for this same sort of adventure. But it uses a very comparable amount of water, especially considering how unconfident we are with 20's tender tank size. The interesting thing to take into account is the weight of the train. 491 plus the train is about 507,000 pounds. 20 plus the train is 335,000 pounds. So 491 moving her own big fat butt up the hill plus the train is a lot more weight than 20 was moving. And so when you actually look at a true railroad efficiency metric, Cheers to you, ESD engine crew, for suggesting this, by the way. When you actually take a look at that metric of gallons per ton mile, 491 is more efficient. 491's gallons per ton mile rating was 1.04, meaning that you could basically get 1.04 miles out of a gallon of water for each ton of freight. 20s was only 0.895. So you're talking about a couple percentage points less for the amount of weight it had to move. And now let me stop you right there. I know many of you who watch this channel 
very passionate and you know a ton of stuff about steam railroading and steam locomotive technology. And many of you have probably already typed, if not posted comments about, oh, 491 is a superheated engine and superheat is a huge important piece of technology that actually allows for much better efficiency of the locomotive than just saturated steam. 491 is probably going to be more efficient anyways because of that. You're wrong. 491 does not superheat at the Colorado Railroad Museum. For superheat to actually work, you have to have the fire very hot, very, very, very hot for a long enough time to actually get proper heat transfer between the exhaust gases in the flues and then the actual steam passageways. So you have to have a long hill that's long enough for the engine to start superheating. Our hill's not long enough. We have temp gunned her branch pipes. They never get above the temperature of saturated steam. We have experienced the thing of you shut the throttle off with the units charged and she just dumps out like 20 does. If it was truly superheated, that volume of steam would take a lot longer to actually go through and exhaust out the engine. So she doesn't superheat at the museum. So then why is the big engine that weighs a bunch more more efficient on water. It was nowhere near as efficient on coal. Why is it better with water? And the answer is cut off. 491 has so much extra power because her pistons are so much bigger. She has a 20 by 24 inch bore and stroke. So a lot bigger than 20s, which are 16 by 20. And their MAWP, maximum allowable working pressure, is pretty comparable. 175 on 491 and 180 on 20 these days. That means for the same amount of pressure, you get more force out of 491. That's why it's a more powerful engine and all that stuff. But because of that, 491 can run with the Johnson bar closer to center. You basically run 491 the whole time with the bar hooked up as high as it goes. Very, very small cutoff. You're getting more expansion out of the steam. You're getting that economy by closing the ports earlier and letting the steam expand and reduce its pressure before it exhausts. Whereas 20, having smaller pistons and less force, you have to have that force for longer. You end up clicking the bar down a couple clicks for more power and you can't run it as efficient as it goes. You can't run it all the way up all the time. You have to give it more power. And so by increasing the cutoff, you're using a bigger volume of water than you would on 491, which just stays hooked up the whole time. There you go. The proof's in the pudding. That is why the Johnson bar and hooking things up makes things more efficient. 491's hooked up all the way, used not that much more water than 20. 20 had to notch down. There you go. I bet you if you could run her hooked up all the way, she would have used way less water, but that's not the case. And now I mentioned a couple times about 20's tender. Thankfully, railroad manufacturers um, liked to drink a lot and didn't like to write a lot of stuff down, particularly in the 1800s. And so there's folio sheets out there and none of them agree on how much water the tender tank holds. And then the railroad modified it and extended it a foot. And some of the new folios mentioning extensions to tanks of her sisters say up to 3,200 gallons. Some guesses say 2,800, 3,000 is kind of in the middle. We don't actually know, and calculating it is more complicated than you'd think because the baffling and the bracing and none of the sheets are flat perfect, and it's just a whole thing. So it's about 3,000. That might be a little bit conservative if you believe the folios on 22 and 25 that got extensions later as well. Maybe it was a little bit more than that, in which case the comparison's even closer. And then you also consider the other confounding variable of 491's tender tank is the 1902 Rio Grande cistern that um, occasionally likes to leak and then rust over and then stop leaking and it drips a fair bit. So there's a little bit of extra consumption that's not going into the engine. When you consider that, you realize that maybe the comparison is even closer than we saw. 491 is erroring on the big side and 20 is erroring on the small side based on those facts. So I thought this was super cool. This is a great suggestion after we did the coal comparison video. Thank you guys for providing great comments. Um, that really helps drive fun new investigations on the channel. And I, honest to God, you saw it when I opened the tender hatch. I was not expecting 491 to use that little water. 
I was expecting it to be more like the coal because I already knew that she didn't superheat. I knew that fact, but I guess that economy of the Johnson bar really, really does add up. And that makes a whole lot of sense. The last piece of data I will leave you before we get out of here is that based on that consumption rate, 491 could run 24.7 miles at the museum with that train and 20 could run 16 before the tenders were dry. And that was that. So there's a reason that the railroads placed water tanks about every 10 miles back in the day, particularly with these smaller locomotives and on the narrow gauge. Oh, and next time, by the way, speaking of the coal test, we did it more scientifically this year. That'll be coming out sometime soonish. Asterisk. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked this one. We will catch you all next time.